this week I have Just a Law on the show today. Just, uh, thank you so much for joining me. Timothy, thank you for having me. So it's, you know, your, your affiliation with Jedi Mind Tricks is what most people, uh, how most people I think are familiar with you, but you have plenty of solo material as well, which we'll get into uh, moving forward. But before we get into your career at the moment, it's important for people who maybe aren't familiar with Just a Law to understand how he got into the game. So bring us back to that, that moment when you were exposed to hip-hop, when you, whether it was a song, maybe you saw some b-boys break dancing, maybe you walked by, uh, you know, Cope's uh, uh, mural on a wall or something and just were inspired. How did you get into hip-hop? Wow, wow. You know, well... I pretty much grew up into it because uh, I have an older sister who was a fan of it. She's seven years older than me, so she was always listening to rap. My first rap I re distinctly remember is probably UTFO and, like, the whole uh, Roxanne Chante. And back then I was just like, wow, what is this? You know, and, uh, you know, um, it, was, it just kind of intrigued me. You know, I was rapping probably by the age of nine. You know, by, by that time, I was just kind of like, wow. You know, it was just kind of like hearing the, the, the wit and the lyrics and the music. It was just, I just never heard anything like that. You know, just listening to what my mom listened to, it was more just soul and, you know, um, Luther Vandross and stuff like that. And then my I had my sister listening to hip-hop. And as soon as I heard that, I started venturing out on my own and just listening to whatever I could, you know. And, uh, you know, you just became involved with the culture. And I was from, I'm from a small town like the Boondocks. It's it's uh, Browns Mills, New Jersey. That's, that's where I'm from. So it was like there was really no other hip-hop outsource or source for me besides like TV, or what I heard on the radio, or what my friends were listening to, what my sister's friends were listening to. So I was always, always into people's, uh, you know what I mean, like, catalog of music. Like, oh, okay, like, he listened to rap. What's he listening to? You know what I'm saying? And just gravitating towards that all the time. It's um, it's interesting, you know, you, I mean, you have a few years on me, even, and I think back to when I was younger and how like music exploration was truly like a discovery process. Like when you would stumble across someone's CD or someone recommended something to you now. And I think, I think the adventure in exploring music is lost a little bit on the internet age because every, everything is so available. It almost seems like it's less exciting to be exposed to something. But when you're, you know, I remember being younger and someone would be like, hey, I, I just discovered this artist, you need to listen. And it was like an experience to put the CD in or put the tape in and listen to it and, and, then, and then enjoy it and then go out and try to find more of their music. You couldn't just Google them and find, well, let me hear all their songs on YouTube. You actually had to go through a process of going to the record store, talking to friends, stuff like that, to get more material from artists you enjoy. Yes, yes. You know, that's, that's yeah, heads are definitely missing that now because I wasn't even aware of it. I was so in, in tune to it. I was almost studying it. You know what I mean? It, was, it, it becomes a part where you're just like, you have to know how to find the music that you like and who's doing it. And you know what I mean? You want to, I never even went to shows because in my area, they just never came to that part of town. So it was kind of just like, yeah, my only outlet to the music was searching and digging for it, you know, and just, just always uh, having an ear open to, to what else was out there. Right, right. So I mean, if you you know if you said you you started rapping almost by the age of uh, of nine, uh, so you know, it would have been like eighty seven, eighty eight that 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 you're starting to you know tamper with uh, with the skill set of rapping. Did you you know and that was like the the heart of the of like hip hop's real movement was in the eighties you know because the exposure was just getting uh, was getting a lot more uh, and then of course going the momentum that it had in the nineties. Did you da did you dabble in any other like elements of hip hop? Did you find yourself breaking or graffiti, or were you solely rap? Yeah, I was solely rap, man. You know, uh, <laughs> we all we all tried to uh, to dance and stuff like that, but 
it, you know, it dances even harder because I had no, you know what I mean, no one to show me moves or there was really no one doing that around the area I was from. We were playing basketball and skateboarding, you know what I'm saying? So it was just, that was all we did. And then, uh, you know, so it was kind of like, yeah, just seeing stuff like that, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I, break dancing, it, if, it, if there were people that did it around me, maybe I would have done it more, even with graffiti. Like, sure. I didn't know any graffiti artists coming up. So it was kind of just, even DJing, it was, that was an expensive hobby, you know what I mean? Like, you, you needed money to do that. So that was, you know what I mean? No one I knew at, like, that age really even did that. That wasn't until, like, you know what I mean, maybe my teenage years. But, yeah, it was like you kind of need to, you know, I always looked up to New York, you know what I mean, just because I felt like, wow, this is like the mecca of hip-hop, you know what I mean? But, you know, it, it's, it's, it's uh, hip-hop exists everywhere, you know what I'm saying? It's like you can't really go to New York and be like, where's the hip-hop, you know what I mean? It's like you got to it, – it's created in certain pockets of people that do it, you know what I mean? And then you just – kind of focus on them and you know what I mean and then I learned to create my own after that you know what I mean you create your own vibe and brand of hip hop yeah absolutely well I'm curious about your your stage name uh because you know it, it, I think there's always there's always an interesting story behind them and and yours is one I'm definitely not familiar with what how did you come to to just a law yeah just a law is just uh pretty much just the name you know um my, my rap name, I, I used to have rap names back in the day. I was, uh, I called myself Gifted. I called myself um, Ominous. You know what I mean? I think there was another one somewhere in there. But Just a Law was, was more of like uh, my attribute when I, when I became a student of the Nation of the Gods and Earths. You know, so it was kind of like, that was just like, that was more of a, like a, a that was more of who I was, you know what I mean? It was more of just my studies in the sciences and stuff like that, and I, I, I just identified with the name. It wasn't really ever intended to be like the rap name, you know what I mean? It was, it was, sure. it was but, uh, you know, just it was like the, at the time the, the first records I was on dropped, that was the, um, you know, people were calling me just, and you know what I mean? It was kind of just like, it just kind of fit better. And, you know, not saying that the rap names were good, getting goofy, you know what I mean? But it was kind of just like I wanted that. Like, you know, there are certain, certain rappers that have names, and then there's certain rappers that don't use, like, stage names. And I, I kind of just felt even more comfortable with just having a name than rather having, like, a, you know what I mean, like a, um, like a, a rap name necessarily. Sure. So – a question that I really enjoy asking MCs, and one I think they have a little bit more difficulty answering because it takes a lot of recall. But you know, you started. You so you started rapping way back at the age of nine. Uh, you know, you're 36 now. That's a long time to be involved in one skill set. Yeah. Can you remember, or can you recall at least one time where you noticed that your talent took a huge leap when you noticed when you started? Uh, I mean, when he recorded a song or started writing or you're freestyling something, you're like, man, I got, I've seriously gotten better at this. Yeah, you know, it was, it was back when, um, I guess I was like 14 when uh, I recorded the first demo with what is, what is now Jedi Mind Tricks or what was then Jedi Mind Tricks, you know what I mean? Like, uh, um, we were called something else, but uh, it was the pressure of having to perform it, you know what I mean? It was like... I was more of just, like, the freestyle dude, like, back then, like, 13, it was uh, 12, 13, it was just easy to just say something that, you know what I mean, a rhyme that you remembered and then just go off the top of your head with whatever else, you know, and then, you know, when it was like, oh, you got to do an actual 16-bar rhyme, and, you know what I mean, like, people are going to hear this forever, you know, so. It was kinda, <laughs> forever. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of like oh, it's time to step the game up. And it, and then it was like, it wasn't until maybe like the third or fourth track. I was all, I was always like a, a, a patient writer. You know what I mean? Like, nah, I could do better. I could do better. So I would always like 
sort of wait to the last minute to to give my you know what I mean to give my best in. And yeah. th- there was one line in particular I can recall. It was like we were in the car going to record it, and I still hadn't finished the rhyme. And it was it it was something that was in the news, and uh, I like just thought of it like right while we were about to record. I was like. Uh, I introduce my style hall call. I bring it raw. The pain is worse than getting caned in Singapore. And you know what I mean? Like, at the time, there was a kid who who got was, like, graffitiing on cars in Singapore from the States, and they were going to cane him, you know what I mean, like, as his punishment. Oh, wow. Yeah, like, nobody remember it now, you know what I'm saying? But like, it was, it, at the time, it was, like, a big news event. And then... That's how I learned, oh, the punchline. You know what I mean? It was like that it, – it made it so much better, you know what I mean, having an actual s- substance to a rhyme or, you know what I mean, an actual line that, like, stuck out to people. Yeah, it's wh- where they – it's no longer it, – it, there's a metaphor, but there's also a reality involved in it. Right, right, right. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. So – you know, you talk. You know, so there's your there's that that creative leap that you saw, and so over the past, you know, let's say twenty twenty five years, let's talk about your creative process and maybe even how it's evolved. So, um, you know, how how does Just a Law approach a track? Do you hear a beat and get inspired? Do you have lyrics and then search for a beat? How does that work for you? Man, you know that that was one thing I learned. You know, uh, because how I, how I developed even my skill, you know, I was always a a guest on a, on a track, you know, I would say now to this extent, you know, it was like, um, I never really chose my own beats. It was like, uh, you know, um, we had a dude doing the, all the beats. So you pretty much, he pretty much dictated the sound, you know, and you know, that was cool because I kind of, I dug the beats, but it's like, until you have full control, you really don't even have, like, an approach to a track, you know, I mean, I know most heads, you know, they just put a 16 on a track, or, or just a rhyme, or, and then if it's, like, a, a song, oh, well, there's just two, two or three rhymes, you know what I mean, like, just rhymes you could put on anything that don't really, uh, they're not really cohesive with the track or the song. They're just kind of battle rhymes nowadays. And when I started writing, I was just like, or making songs, actually, I was kind of like, nah, I'm not just going to do that. You know what I mean? Like, it's going to make sense. You know what I mean? Like, it's got to be format. It can't just be like, you know what I mean, all over the place. Like, some people, to me, it sounds like they have a 100 remixes to the same song because the lyrics are interchangeable to anything they do, you know what I mean? But I was just kind of like, when I approached this album, and they, actually this, the album, when it, when I was doing the solo album, it it forced me to actually dig into my imagination and find those songs, you know? It's like a lot of people, I kind of feel, they don't really push themselves to, to create good music because they're impatient or... You know what I mean? Whatever factors, it, it's a maybe it's a money thing or, you know what I mean? They just want to rush out product. But with me, it's always been like, I want that one track that's going to, like, knock people out. Like, uh, on the rail, I just saw uh, Busta Rhymes. Like, um, it, was, it, it was on a YouTube clip or something, but he was at the, um, the, the, the summer jam they did in New York. And he performed put your hands where my eyes can see and it, and the crowd went nuts. And to this day, people go nuts when they hear that song, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's strength. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you, I always wanted that as an MC, you know what I mean? To, to command the crowd with something you've done, you know, like something like that. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, and you talk about a, an artist when they hit the stage and all it takes, um, you know, um, like with Kanye, you know, when that, you know, get my money, as soon as you hear that, the whole, he hasn't even said anything yet, you know, and the whole crowd will go nuts because they know, you know, what's, 
they know what's coming up. So just hearing the the, the back of a uh, hearing the introduction or like the, the the just the two or three seconds of the beat can just make the whole crowd go nuts because they you know they're so excited about that song. It's one that was done so well and it held such a strong place in time that everybody's excited to experience it right there. Right, right, yeah, man. You know, it's it's almost about an energy, and you know, I I, I learned you know the more you focus. Or sometimes, you know, some people just have a creative energy where, you know what I mean, like they can just record a song every day and maybe one of those songs will be a hit, you know what I'm saying? Like me, I'm I'm more like, let me just try to record this hit, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I'll, I'll just focus on, on one thing for a long time, you know, and I've, I've figured like that's how I got my best rhymes out of it, you know what I mean? It's It's never like a a rush thing or it sounds like it's forced, you know, I was, like I said, I was always the guest MC. So it was like, I just wanted to be as sharp as I could writing that one sixteen bar. You know what I mean? It was like, okay, this is all I got to do. I'm going to do it the best I can, you know? And then when it came to making the songs, I was like, Oh, okay. This is how it's going to like, I had a, a distinct way I wanted to present it. You know what I mean? Like, and, you know, I just do my best to try to match what's in my head with what's going to be on the song. Sure, sure. Your your lyrics have been uh, described as aggressive, Afrocentric, and hateful in subject matter. Um, and I think, I think anybody who's familiar with your material, like, that description makes sense. Um, uh, you know, you definitely have a more aggressive approach to your delivery. Um, what I'm curious to know is how does – I mean, we've been talking here now for 20 minutes. We're, we're clearly enjoying our conversation. You're, I don't feel like you're walking around in a constant state of hate. How does – you know, when you're writing these aggressive lyrics, you know, what does it do to your mood uh, outside of the music? Like, does it – are you easily – can you easily shut off the difference between – your creative material and then life outside of that or have you noticed have you seen it blend yeah you know i mean almost it is like like uh you know we all i think we all have um multiple personalities to a certain extent you know what i'm saying so it's like like what that's me you know what i mean when i'm writing that's me and when i'm just chilling that's me you know what i'm saying but the writing is more of like if I compressed my life to a 16 bar, you know what I mean? Like it, it it's like, um, just, um, damn. <laughs> it's like, uh, I just try to put as much energy as I can into it. And sometimes that comes off as like aggression. And, you know, I like, I'm aware of my audience, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I love all my fans, you know what I mean? Like, no matter, like, what color or or whatever they are, you know? But, you know, I sometimes I feel I do have to, without touching on certain topics, like, I don't want to talk about race or politics in the rhymes, but, you know, in a, I can, there's a way you can say that you're not. Like, you know, when people listen back at this 100 years from now, they want to know the mind state of the people that that were making the music, you know what I mean? Like, if we're in a climate of like racial hatred, it, the and you know what I'm saying, like uh, stuff, the police brutality, like it's got to reflect in the art that that exists of modern times. You know what I mean? Like, you can't like. There's a bigger picture to it. Like, I, I I'm the, I'm chill. You know what I mean? I'm always chill, but it's like. I do see like a bigger picture and a more worldly view of things. So I want to reflect that in the art and in the music. Yeah, absolutely. And then another, uh, one more question I have before we get to we dive into one of your lyrics. Um, you know, like we mentioned at the top of the show, you're, you know, generally affiliated with, with, with Jedi mind tricks. Um, you know, you've been in and out of that group a couple of times in your career um, I'm not. I'm not really. I'm not really curious about what you know the the the, the cause or the the case of anything that that happened. What I'm curious about is how it affects your material. Going from 
a you know when you're in Je when you're in Jedi, you're 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 a rapper in a group. You know, you're you're giving you're you're contributing one verse to the song, and then you have to step out of that group and you have to be a solo artist and you have to make the entire song. And how does how does that affect your material going from being one contributor to being the main act, and then just the process of having to leave that affiliation and go from the brand of Jedi Mind Tricks to the brand of Just Allah? Wow, yeah, you know, um, it, it's a lot different. You know, it's it's just like if you were I got to play two positions now, or or it's one position. You know what I mean? Like I kind of look at it as like you're just I'm just digging deeper into um, my own self now. You know what I mean? Now it, the album requires more of myself. You know, like the, the album I have now, MMA, it has more lyrics on it or rhymes than, than probably two Jedi Mind Trick albums that I've been on, you know, but it's solo. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's not, uh, it's not, uh, it's not, um, it's supposed to have more lyrics, but you know what I mean? Like, I think that I held the job down better, and you know when I'm when you're when you're on a track with somebody, I'm usually competing with them. You know what I mean? Like low key, I'm competing with you. You know what I mean? Like I want to sound better than you. You know what I mean? Like, and that's that's where it comes from. You know, I want people to remember my rhyme over yours. You know, it's and, and so when I'm recording for myself, or just it's just me on the track alone, it's like okay, um, who am I competing against? I just have to put my best material out there and try to match it with the, with the rhyme, you know what I mean? Try to match the rhymes in some way or just go on a topic, you know what I mean? Like I, like I said, I listen to a lot of people's songs, man, and, and it just sounds like the same song. You know, the, the beat may be different, but there's no real, there's no real, um, depth to it you know like i you you could tell what the dude's next 10 songs are going to be just from the one song you know absolutely i think uh and that's that's what a lot of fans biggest criticism of any solo artist is is you know all of your material um it's important for your it's important for your delivery and your brand and everything to have a certain sound but it's another thing when i hear a song of yours and i feel like i'm just hearing another track recycled um, like, uh, I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with the, the group Daft Punk. Um, they have a very distinct sound and they've admitted that that's, that's on purpose. They, they want to make tracks that when people hear it, even before hearing this Daft Punk think, oh man, this sounds like Daft Punk. But then you flip over to someone, and I don't want to, I don't want to criticize a legend too much, but you go to someone like Jadakiss and I, I'm sorry, all of his deliveries and rhymes and all that sort of, they, they sort of, they sound like they're all pulled from the same, like, same rhyme scheme and everything. And I think, you know, and that's, uh, there's a, there's a, that's two distinct differences of having a branded sound and then just sounding the same throughout all your lyrics. Right, 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 yes. Yeah, see, it's, it's, it's all about your approach to music, too. You know, uh, Jada, he's in a group, or he, I, I, I'm more affiliate Jada. I know he's solo. But yeah, his rhymes do sound like if he were in a in a group and he just spit the 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 um the hardcore shit all the time. You know what I mean? The battle yeah. shit. Like yeah, there's really no you know, he does songs like Why and he's got, you know what I mean, some variety in there. But for the most part, you're getting that rhyme. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're you're right. He he has a cadence and a See, Jada, though, you know what I mean? There, some people just have that it factor. It's yeah. like every time I hear his voice, though, I, I like, I, I pick up. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, shit, he about to say something. You know what I mean? And it's just, he just has a commanding tone to him, you know? And, and like, with the Daft Punk, like, yeah, the, the Let's Get Lucky, like, that that's catchy as hell. You know what I'm saying? Like, their approach is is more on a on a universal tip, you know what I mean? Like they, sure. they probably think on a, uh, yo, this, like we have to sound different because of our brand, you know what I mean? We wanted to reach more people, you know what I'm saying? And it's a, it's a softer sound. Yeah. And before anybody starts messaging me about hating on Jada, I'm just pointing out a, uh, a <laughs> part of his delivery. I love Jada kiss. And, and like you, I peek up every time I hear him get on a, on a track. 
So, Just, let's get into some of your lyrics. I pulled this excerpt from your song, Chess King. I'm saying what you fear. I'm past beyond that. The things that give you tears, I had laughed in your death. Your fucking heart's I feel like there's more life behind this uh, behind this lyric because I feel like you really were were thinking about some things that that you know that you've had to encounter that other people may tremble at more. I mean, can you speak on that? Am I am I reading into that lyric correctly? Um, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, you know, um, we we all come from. Um, we all have our own problems in our own lives. You know what I'm saying? Like, you you can't say like a dude that grew up in the hood has a harder life than a dude that grew up in the suburbs. You know what I mean? You never know what goes on with any person. You know, so it's like I. But me personally, like just just being what I've been through and what I've seen. You know what I'm saying? It's just giving me a, a like a fearless nature about me you know what i mean like it's kind of like i'm really numb to stuff you know so it's kind of i just try to move move um like that you know what i mean it, it it's more of like um you just you want to you want the fans to understand that you can relate to them and at the same time you know what I mean? You you want to say, well, but I'm different than you. You know what I mean? Like it, it's it's yeah. it's a relatable thing, but it's in the same time, this is my own story. You know what I'm saying? There's there's like, you know what I mean? Like you, you I want you to understand what I'm going through, but at the same time, you know, just give me my like, let me live what I lived. You know what I mean? Like let let me own my own story. You know? Absolutely, absolutely. Just let's uh, – we're going to go into what uh, what people, would, I guess, would consider a lightning round. I still don't know what to call this, uh, so we'll call it that for lack of a better term. Um, you've worked with a lot of MCs. You've been around the game for a long time, but I'm sure there's still people on your list that you'd love to work with. If I could snatch any artists around the world to come on a track with Just a Law, who, who would you want to work with? Yeah, you know, when I <laughs> – um, that's a hard question just because – you know, once I started recording stuff for myself, you you get to appreciate what music is about, and and it, it's a real spiritual thing almost. You know what I'm saying? Like of recording, and you know, it was the features that I've had in my career. I I did a feature with Sean Price, and he did it on the arm, and you know what I mean? Like um. It was more, it was like, he really didn't even know who I was. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, he was just a cool dude, and he did it. Like, like I think he liked the beats that we were working with. So, you know what I mean? But, like, I hooked that up, and you know what I mean? Like, he did it. And that was cool, you know? But asking people to do stuff nowadays, you know what I mean? Like, that was cool when I was young, but, like, nowadays it's like, I, I'm a fan of people, you know what I mean? Cool G Rap is my favorite. Even now, I'm like, I don't know how we would sound on a track together, you know what I mean? Just because right. I'm so kind of into my own thing now. It's not it's not a knock on anybody, but it was like, you know, like some people, they load their albums up with guest spots, you know, or they get these huge features, and then they end up sounding like, the the person that doesn't belong on the track you know what i mean like they either get, <laughs> yeah they they get outdone by people that they paid to be on the songs with them or, or you know what i mean it's just weird paying people to make music with i've always liked the organic feel of it you know what i mean if you know what i mean even in jedi mind it was like i really didn't feel like we needed that many guests to 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 be featured on the songs because it kind of takes away from your own sound so sure. yeah, if if you know if I got cool with a rapper, you know what I'm saying, like, and, and we were building and vibing, yeah, definitely. But if it's like, if it's nobody I know personally, I'm not really gonna like seek out um, to to make music with people. It's just I'm just more comfortable, you know what I mean? It's just awkward, and you're you're asking, and you know I would never want to pay nobody, you know what I'm saying? So it was just like. Yeah, it's like I just want to keep it my content, like uh, you know, it's it's more personal this way. 
So what about, uh, you know, you've, you've performed in many places around the country. I'm sure you've done some international uh, performances as well. Is there anywhere you haven't performed that you wish you could? Man, you know, I, I'm going to say this, like, I never really – thought about touring with rapid it was like that was like an afterthought and yeah. you know so like the when i started going to crazy places like i've been everywhere you know what i mean like I, my first spot was amsterdam that kind of blew my mind you know what i mean it was like wow i never expected this and 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 i'm you know what i mean it was just kind of like i'm not really a tourist like i'm not going out sightseeing i'm pretty much in a hotel and just enjoying the people that that's more of traveling to me so you know anywhere that's where good people are i haven't been to japan you know what i'm saying i don't know how <laughs> how how into hip-hop they are or, or what it what the vibe is but like i've been to australia i've been to hungary i've been to greece you know what i mean it, it all and it, it for me it kind of all runs together not that i don't appreciate it but it's just like it's just i it's just one thing. It's touring. You know what I mean? Like it's like yeah. you really just see the hotel and the venue, and then you know what I mean. Like then you're in the next city. You know what I'm saying? The next day. So it's kind of like I just like being in places like where the weather's cool. I don't like cold places, but like yeah, where the weather's cool, and you know uh, the the it's a good hip hop crowd that it can can appreciate the music and Europeans are mad appreciative of artists and the music in general, you know? Yeah, that's very cool. And lastly, what about a producer? If we could snag any producer to make a beat for Just a Law, who do you think would would, would uh, make the best sound for somebody you haven't worked with yet? Yeah, you know, that that's the same kind of question, you know, as the, the feature. Just because, you know, um, I've kind of developed a sound with the brothers that I'm working with now, you know what I mean? Like, um, the Frog Brothers, you know what I mean? Like, the, the these dudes I found for this album, and it it was like, you know, I'm not, my, I, actually, my, I would probably want to work with Alchemist, you know what I mean? He's, like, probably my, the king to me, you know what I'm saying? Like, he can make anything sound good, you know? He just has that, like, it factor with his beats. But, um, you know, I've developed, I'm developing my own sound to where, I kind of just want to build that up, you know what I mean? Like, but I do appreciate like, um, you know, the the Alchemist, the, the LP, you know what I mean? Just Blaze. Uh, yeah. I, I mess with um, with uh, oh, the High and the Mighty, Mighty My, yeah, he had some crazy beats, you you know, like, uh, mm -hmm. like uh, I I remember all that, you know what I mean? Like that that was a that was a huge influence on what I did you know um nowadays Apollo Brown you know what I mean like um I like what he did with the Ghostface album that was kind of crazy and you know like but uh, yeah I listen I pretty much know everyone if you're in underground hip-hop I know your name I know the producers I know you know what I mean I I study this so it's kind of like I've like I know everyone you know what I mean and I have people that I always check for like that the even the rappers and the producers I just named are people that I listen to. I'm more fans of, and you know, even even it's like you could be a fan of somebody without actually collaborating with them. You know what I'm saying? It's like these are people that I I, I admire. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like I don't, I wouldn't want to mess up their flow, or you know what I mean? And I wouldn't, or you know what I mean? It's like I just want to play my position. You know what I'm saying? Like that's always what I wanted to do as far as music, you know what I mean? Like, even with, with Jedi Mind, I was, like, just trying to be the sharpest I could at what I was doing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Just thank you so much for taking the time to, to talk to me and talk to my audience about your career, your creative process, your music, et cetera. I know anybody who's familiar with you is, is, a lab, is feeling uh, very fulfilled in what they've heard. Anybody who hasn't is probably curious about, uh, you know what what kind of music you have to offer uh, we'll be featuring uh, the feature track on today's show is 180 uh, which is coming off of MMA when can we expect MMA yeah Tim, Timothy you know uh, I took a I took a while to record the album you know a lot of it was searching for beats and you know um, 
it was just a process of me getting my footing into uh what I was doing like but uh you know you know Steve and Ethan at Marston House you know that they, they're like uh we, we're wrapping it right now you know what I'm saying like as we speak it's kind of like right in the works you know I'm just getting the artwork together I really didn't feel a rush on putting out the album I really don't have a date yet so I like it was more of just like I just wanted to create an album that I felt was perfect you know what I mean like like I took my time with every rhyme like I didn't rush nothing I cut some stuff off of it that I wasn't feeling you know what I'm saying like I, I remixed stuff just to just to to make it a complete thing you know there was no real time time limit on it because like uh when you get into the business of making music you know what I mean I think that's what makes it, um the the music watered down like when you go to the studio every week and you have to come up with something or you know what I mean sometimes that pressure is good but after a while I think you're you, you're playing the same note and you know what I mean there's no real growth in that like it ain't a really about like there's people that have written way more rhymes than me but like that I I feel like that it doesn't really even enhance the skill because it's not about the rhyme it's about the thought that you put into it you know what I'm saying so it's like I if I write 10 rhymes you know what I mean like those rhymes is going to be crazy, you know what I mean, and, and remembered, you know what I mean, as far as, like, on, on, on a, a, a level of, of just creating from a place of not rushing stuff out just so the fans yeah. can uh, say that they have something physical of yours, you know what I mean? Like, that was the biggest backlash I got was because I'm taking my time, but the beats weren't right that I was getting, you know, and, you know, I'm working with people that ain't been in doing this as long as I have, you know, all, all the, like all the producers are no name, not no name, but yeah, I mean, it's like, uh, these are dudes that you've never heard of, you know what I'm saying? And to, to create a, to bring the best out of them and to bring the best out of myself, you know what I mean? It took time, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't like, we we just like hopped in the studio and it was just magic you know what i'm saying it was like okay he, like i it was very a patient process of picking and choosing what what i wanted to hear so yeah there's no day for the album but you know what i'm saying it, it should be out like next month i'm not even like either the end of this month or next month okay well that's 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 uh relatively soon yeah yeah. All right. Well, Just, thank you so much. Uh, 180 is a feature track. We're all following you on Twitter at Just Allah MMA, uh, and of course we're we're listening to to your music and we're uh, we're awaiting the release of of MMA to to see what wonderful material is coming out of Marson House. Yes. 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 You know, um, Ethan and uh, Steve, man, they've been really cool dudes. Like, like the studio is I'm mad comfortable there. You know what I mean? It, it's like like, uh, it, it's just a, a vibe, you know what I mean? Like, mu music, it shouldn't be, like, a, a stressful thing, you know? It, it should be, like, an easygoing thing you do, you know what I mean? I, like, I look at it as more of as even a hobby, you know what I'm saying? Like, there is money involved, but, you know what I mean? For me, it's like, yo, like, you, you always want to present it the best way you can, you know, because um, the you're only as good as like your last thing you do, you know? So when people try to water down their legacy of like putting out just product after product, I think, you know what I mean? People just need to slow down and then, and then put out music, you know, cause it, it just sound, it just, the whole sound is better, you know? Are we gonna, are we gonna hear you on a Marston house site for any time? You know? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's good. When, 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 oh, sorry about that. There's, there, you're fine. Uh, but yeah, uh, as soon as the album comes out, you you know what I mean? Like n nobody's heard anything new from me uh, un until, you know what I mean? Until this album comes out, you know, 180 right. dropped. I had another video uh thought crime dropped, you know, the, they're both on the album, but you know, other than that, like no one's heard anything new until, you know what I mean? This album comes out, but once it, once it drops, Oh man, the the cipher is gone. You know what I mean? Like good, good. Out cipher. I'm I'm gonna destroy that. You know? And Love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, it, I I I owe it to him. You know what I mean? Like, 
I want, I want, I want to do stuff like that. You know, it was, it was like, that's who I am. You know, that like, I'm the cypher dude. I'm that one dude in the cypher dude that's going to spit a rhyme. You're going to remember, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like that, that's me. So yeah, I always try to do stuff like that. Fantastic. Fantastic. Blogtalkradio.com slash Marston House. We can listen to more episodes of Mighty Mighty Marston House. And of course, YouTube.com slash Marston X House. We can check out all of the Marston House, Marston House ciphers. Just, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, Timothy, for having me, man. I appreciate that, man. And it was a good interview, man. You, you asked some good questions. Thank you. I, I take a lot of pride in my ability to ask good questions. Like, there's, you know, you talk to, you know, talking, you've done, a, you've done, you know, hundreds of interviews, right? I want to make sure that when you, ha when you do this interview, you know, you walk away feeling like you really gave the audience something and not something that's been reiterated year after year after year. Yes, yes. You know, that, that's the thing, you know, nowadays in the digital age, everything you do has to be quality, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I always want to present my brand in a way that looks good now, you know what I mean? And, and definitely this interview it worked. Great. I love that. I love that. I'm Timothy Lawson on behalf of Steve, Ethan, and the rest of us here at Marson House. I'll see you next week. Pull a 4-4 from out of the seat. I'm out of the beat. Clear niggas out of the street. The body can creep. Someone hates